a remote employee is complaining that their VPN connection drops every 10 to 15 minutes. The internet connection appears stable and no other users are experiencing issues. You suspect that their home router settings might cause them a problem. Which of the following steps should you take to diagnose and resolve the issue? Select three. A, check if the ISP is throttling VPN traffic. B, adjust the MTU size on the router and VPN client. C, recommend the user switch from a wire to a wireless connection. D, reconfigure the VPN protocol from UDP to TCP or E. Disable, disable QoS settings on the router. Give you guys a couple of seconds to think about it. All right, time is up. Got to pick three. So we're going to the next screen. You guys already have your answers. Let's go. All right, so the answers that you should have picked was A, B and D. So A is check if the ISP is throttling VPN traffic. Do you see what I was talking about about the acronyms? If you have no idea what ISP is, if you have no idea what VPN is, it's going to be a lot more difficult. So ISP is simply the internet service provider. Comcast, Xfinity, fill in the blank, whoever you use for your internet. If you're doing too much, they can actually throttle. Throttle just means slow down your internet speeds, right? And that's something that you can't really do anything about. So you want to make sure that you check that first because you can do all this other stuff, do all this other troubleshooting, do all this uh, figuring out, unplugging, buying stuff, removing stuff, deleting stuff. And it's something that's kind of out of your control. Next up is adjust the MTU size on the router and VPN client in the comments right now, right now. Tell me what MTU stands for and what VPN stands for. Then bonus. Tell me what a VPN is used for. MTU, what it stands for, VPN, what it stands for, and what a VPN is used for. Last but not least, reconfigure the VPN protocol from UDP to TCP. So like I was saying, uh, ISPs will throttle your uh, bandwidth, your download speed, so on and so forth, if you're doing too much, right? So you can also try to change your uh, VPN from UDP to TCP because it'll actually make the traffic and the connection a little bit more stable. It may be slower, but uh, it'll make things uh, a lot more stable. All right, next up. A technician is troubleshooting a company issued Android tablet that frequently freezes and becomes unresponsive. The issue persists across multiple applications, even after a soft reset. What should the technician check to determine the root cause? Select two. A, inspect running background of applications for high CPU memory usage. B, verify the storage space available on a device. C, run a full factory reset and observe if the issue persists. D, check if the tablet is overheating during normal use or E, Replace the tablet's battery as a preventive measure. Go ahead and give you guys uh, some time to, to think about this and to figure it out. Make sure that you're getting information, understanding what the question is asking, selecting to go on with your gut, and then go ahead and move them forward. All right, time is up. So the two answers that you should have picked is inspect running background applications for high CPU memory usage. So some stuff just runs in the background, right? You may not even be thinking about it. It's stuff running in the background while I'm doing this. And if it's something that is too uh, CPU and memory uh, heavy, it can actually cause other applications to crash, have cause other applications to uh, do things that we don't want them uh, to do. Next up is verify the storage space available on the device. If you have a low storage available on your device, it can cause things to freeze, cause things to shut down and cause things to crash. All right, next up. 
A user's Windows 11 laptop is experiencing frequent blue screen of death or B side crashes with the error memory under slash management. The system passes a post test, but crashes continue, continue intermittently. So intermittently it crashes. What are the most effective steps to diagnose the issue? Select three. A, run Windows memory diagnostic to test for faulty RAM. B, disable all startup applications and services. C, update the BIOS firmware to the latest version. D, swap the RAM modules and test in different slots. Or E, perform a full low volume format of the hard drive. As always, make sure that you fully understand what the question is asking and make your best guess. Once you pick whatever you're going to pick, just stick with it and move forward. I would advise doing that right now and doing that in the exam room. So a lot of this stuff is uh, sticking out for uh, a reason. Now, depending on uh, what you're studying, if it's the right stuff, if you have a mentor, you know, there's a lot of things that factor into um, your decision making skills. So um, if you're doing it on your own, you know, if you trust yourself, you know, go ahead and pick what whatever you think it is. We ready? Make sure you pick three. So you should have picked A, C, and D. So A, run Windows memory diagnostic to test for faulty RAM. So uh, if you run the, the memory diagnostic test, it should tell you if the RAM, if something weird, it's not enough, it's corrupted, so on and so forth. Also update the, the BIOS firmware to the latest version. So a BIOS is a basic input output system. And if it's not updated, it can make things challenging. If certain stuff will not work. Certain stuff will just act weird. And then D, swap the RAM modules and test in different slots. Now, sometimes the slots on the motherboard can get dirt, grime, weird stuff in it. Or maybe you just knocking around uh, the device, the RAM can actually get loose. It can get unseated. So you can try it in different slots to see if that helps anything. All right, gang. So we're almost five questions in, right? How are we doing? How are we doing? How are we doing right now? How do we feel? <laughs> if this is the real exam, will we be passing? Will we be failing? Uh, what do we think? So I just want to do a brief intermission right now. If this is valuable to you, I would strongly uh, appreciate and um, would like for you to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. So I drop videos like this all the time. I have about a thousand videos literally on this channel that help people just like you uh, get into tech, whether it's get certifications, whether it's pass certifications, whether it's to get a job or if it's just motivation to get off of your lazy ass all that stuff is on this channel so if um, this is valuable to you uh, like the video it helps with the algorithm so i can get in front of more people uh, help more people and um make sure you subscribe so you can see whenever we drop hot fire like this all right so we're ready to get to the next question let's make it happen all right so a technician is setting up a workstation for an employee who requires access to sensitive financial records. The IT department enforces least privileged access policies. Which security configuration should be applied to this workstation? Select three. A, configure full disk encryption. B, enable a local administrator account for flexibility. C, implement role-based access control. D, require biometric authentication for login, or E, allow unrestricted internet access for efficiency. All right, you guys should know the routine by now. Make sure that you pick three that make the most sense for this scenario. Don't think of anything outside of this scenario. Think about just this scenario and what three things would make the most sense for this scenario. You ready? Let's go. All right, you should have picked these three. 
So A, configure full disk encryption. Literally just means it's going to encrypt the entire hard drive. C, implement role-based access control, meaning that people that have certain roles will be the only people to have certain permissions to do certain things, right? So depending on your role, you would have certain permissions to do certain jobs. Then D, require biometric authentication for login. So biometric authentication just means that you have to use something that's biologically a part of you to authenticate and gain access to software applications, so on and so forth. So that could be an iris scan, that could be a fingerprint scan, that could be uh, something that's a part of you, right? Voice recognition, so on and so forth. 